Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Vinland Saga. Last time around, we finished off Season 1, the end of the prologue, where basically, uh, Askeladd, uh, had to sacrifice himself. Uh, the king basically said, it's a choice between whales and Canute, and, uh, Askeladd said, well, I don't believe in the no-win scenario. So he killed the king, and because of that, he had to take the fall so that Canute could rise. And, uh, and Canute, as his first act, is not going to... Well, I guess as his first act was to kill Askeladd. His second act is to not invade Wales. Um, so Askeladd succeeded, but he is unfortunately dead. Uh, Thorfinn did not kill him, and, uh, it's... Oh, it has, it has shook him to his core, definitely. Um, and he did try to attack Canute, but he was put down by Thorkel, and so things are not going well for Thorfinn, definitely, um, but yeah, um, and that was pretty much it, Askeladd is dead, with his final words saying, go, go forward, find, find the new world, as Thors would have, and that's pretty much where we left off, it is the beginning of the season, it is, the, finally, it's been so long, but it is the beginning of season two, uh, like always, my, uh, full-length reaction is available for the first episode of the season, so you can go watch that. It's the second link in the description and in the pinned comment. Uh, all you have to do is sync up your copy of this episode of Villain Saga to my footage. It's easy as possible. Uh, I'm watching this on Crunchyroll. Um, and yeah, you can watch it. Hopefully you have a good time. And, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can always stick around... Well, not stick around on here, but there's a, the first link there is to the reaction highlight, which is the normal edited reaction uh, that you can watch. That's also completely free for every episode. Um, and whichever one you choose, I do encourage you to come back here to this YouTube video for the discussion. So, with that said, why don't we just jump right into Season 2, Episode 1 of Vinland Saga. Here we go. <sighs> Well, time has certainly passed, at least a little bit by a year or so. They don't say what year it is, but things have definitely changed after what happened last episode. And now we're going to have to see, we're going to have to be filled in on what happened. Because where last we saw him... Where last we saw him, Thorfinn was just being taken away by, uh, by the guards. With Canute and Thorkel turning their backs on him. I guess... <sighs> Thorfinn being sold into slavery, though, that's pretty interesting. Because, see, I... I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm reaching, but I, f I almost feel like Canute would almost try to reach out to him try to help him, you know? Even though, granted, you know, Canute had more pressing matters, sure, but Canute feels like the kind of character that would have tried to reach out. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. And man, Leif is still looking for him. God damn it. And if this guy, this master, if he had gotten there just a little bit earlier... And heard Leaf talk. I mean, we don't know. Well, I mean, okay. Leaf has been trying to free, find and free Thorfinn. So, I mean, it's entirely possible he would have paid for Thorfinn, you know? And tried to take him home back to Iceland. Man, I'm starting to wonder, like, is he ever going to see his mother again? I don't know. I don't see. I don't know where the story's gonna go. I didn't think the story was gonna go here, but here we are. Orphan is a slave in Northern England, and you know, I was going to make a joke like, "Well, now he's finally gonna be the main character," I guess, and it's like, but is he? I mean, technically, I think the plot for a while, at least, is going to be driven by Thorfinn, but. But we do also have, uh, Einar. We do also have Einar. Or Ener? 
Uh, I'm not really sure which one. They they it was, it was a little difficult for them. It, it was a little difficult the way they said it. I'm going to I'm going to say Einer for a while. Um I mean it's written the same as Ein from Cowboy Bebop, so I'm going to say Einar. You know, are they going to be able to talk to each other really? Cuz like okay, we don't know who the slave master is. I assume I assume because he is, you know, recent, he is clearly the recent owner of this land, because this land used to belong to, you know, the village, basically, that Einar was in. I assume he's Dane. I, I assume he's Danish. So if he's speaking Danish, then, then Thorfinn doesn't have a problem, but I would assume Einar is English. In fact, I'm... 100% positive he is, you know. Einar is English, so... I don't know. Are Does Einar know Danish, or does the Master know English? But that's my next question, then, is... Does Thorfinn know English, you know? You kind of got to be able to communicate orders to a slave, so I assume... Maybe, he, maybe Thorfinn was educated in some English... I don't know. He's clearly... <laughs> he's clearly not the same Thorfinn anymore, you know? He is very clearly broken. And... <sighs> How old did we say Thorfinn was last season? He is about 17, 18. Because now I'm seeing here... That he's, he's starting to get some stubble on his chin. So... So he's... <sighs> I don't know, he's... At the very least, he's a young man now, you know? But I think he's definitely broken, you know? I think he's definitely broken because... Because of losing Asklad, you know? Losing that vengeance, losing... Pretty much the thing that drove him for most of his life, you know? And losing that... I'm sure that broke him, but I don't know, man. I don't know. This is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. But why is he a slave? Why is Thorfinn a slave? That's the next question, you know? That's the next question being posed. So, why is he a slave? And man, just thinking about... I mean, just the journey that Einar has gone on in this episode, where, you know, he lost his mother and his sister he was traded he was traded basically he was he was sold by the vikings he was sold by the vikings to slave dealers who then sold him to a master who owned the place he already lived you know like that's the thing it's like he's literally gone in a roundabout to come back to the place he already was at but Instead of being just a villager, now he's a slave, you know? Now, I don't think his master is too cruel. I mean, we didn't get very much of him. So I'll be curious to see, like, what the characterization is with him. But, um... But at the very least, like, he seemed... I, I don't know, it's an interesting thing. Because this is also, you know... It it's interesting. I like having a story like this. Because this is a kind of different side of slavery than most media will portray. You know, most media, when they portray slavery, it's more based on, you know, the American, you know, the South during, you know, just before the Civil War. That sort of enslavement where it was pretty much all based on race, you know. And it's interesting because that's not what slavery was for, you know... For the Egyptians, for the Romans, for, uh, and now even, yes, for the Vikings, you know, that slavery was not just like, oh, well, that guy's black, well, then I'm going to make him a slave. It's not that. It was, you know, whoever was beaten, whoever was conquered became a slave, you know? That's why you have, you know, Danes enslaving other Danes like Thorfinn, you know? Slavery just is a thing. It's, slavery is an equal opportunity employer, basically. 
Uh, that's what this is. Don't take that out of context, for God's sake. I just said like eight different things that could be that could be really sound bad if you clipped it. So nobody do that. Nobody did. Nobody watches these anyway. Yeah. I mean, obviously a couple of you guys do. Uh, we do have some of the Vinland Saga folks over here. So um, so shout out to, shout out to you. You know. Um, but yeah, it's like this isn't. This isn't the same kind of slavery, and I'm and I like that, you know. And while we did see some of the cruelty, don't get me wrong, and I'm sure we will see more cruelty uh, throughout this arc, I guess. But if anything, like it, it was cruelty. Not again. It's not based on like race or racism or anything. It's just like to them, it was all logical. Slave ran away, punish him. You know, this one isn't gonna even make it. Toss him overboard she's not worth keeping on the boat it's like it's almost a sort of logical there's sort of a logic to it you know so now granted there was still the when uh when einar was being whipped flogged you know that guy had a crazy fucking smile on his face so that still exists you know just these fucking psychopaths that will abuse slaves basically but i'm curious again about their master einar and thorfinn's master because you know he came up, asked him his name. He was like, "Hey, you know, you know, what's your name? What did you used to do?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm Einar. I'm a, I'm a farmer from Northern England." And this guy was like, "Okay, you were a farmer. Okay, well that's interesting." And he and he literally asked him like, "So, you want to come with me, buddy?" You know, he, he literally asked him. You know, he asked him if he wanted to. Now, granted, I'm sure he would have still bought him anyway, but. He literally asked him. He treated him at least kind of like a person. Even if he's going to buy him. Even if he's going to use him as a slave. He did kind of treat him as a person. And he... A. He knows the guy's name. B. He also knows Thorfinn's name. And he seems to have at least some base level of caring. Where he's like, hey, Thorfinn, you need to come meet the new guy. You know? Or at the very least, you know, show him around. But he knows about Thorfinn. He knows Thorfinn's name. He knows where Thorfinn is going to be. And he knows he can trust Thorfinn to help Einar, you know, start his tasks, basically. And that's an interesting thing. That he's not just the, you know, completely evil slave master. You know, I'm sure we might, we, we might get some stuff about that. But I like that approach that it's like, he's not just, you know, he's literally just, he's a guy with a farm. You know, he's a guy with a farm. What's he going to do? Farm it all himself? He got workers. It's just that he bought them instead of just employing them, you know? So, so I like that approach. You know, it shows this sort of ancient style of slavery, you know? Which, and that's always the thing with, uh, with Vinland Saga has been showing, you know, these historical things while having this fictional story, but showing all of this sort of historical, historic, kind of accurate stuff you know it's or you're just showing a very realistic story within this kind of setting you know there's no fantasy whatsoever in this show and i like that so i like taking a look at hey let's like yes is it still terrible yes it's still terrible that the vikings burned this guy's city killed his mother and his sister sold him into slavery threw that one girl overboard and now he is he's literally been bought as a piece of property and brought back to the literal land he lived on and is like hey this is my land now you're going to farm it you know and that's terrible yes but it's interesting <laughs> you know it's interesting it's an interesting idea showing this sort of uh especially this version of slavery from those historical times so i really enjoy that um i really really enjoyed this episode again this show, because, again, I had heard that Season 2 knocked it out of the park and everyone loves Season 2. And I already friggin' love Season 1, so I'm just excited to have Season 2. Um, and it's interesting, because, you know, we are going to be, I'm pretty sure, we're going to be taking a break. You know, we're not going through, mainly just because the actual main driver of the plot of Season 1 is dead. Like, Season 1 was all Askeladd's story. And without him, now the story does have to change. We don't have Canute. We don't have Thorkell. We don't have, you know, we don't have the war between Denmark and England. We don't have 
the you know the royal succession what you know what's going to happen between Canute and Harold we don't know we don't know and I don't know if we're gonna cut back to that that could be interesting but I almost think that we might just stay here and just you know we're just following Thorfinn now. Like, the only reason that we saw, even though we say that Askeladd was the driving force of the plot in Season 1, the only reason we saw anything in Season 1 was because Thorfinn was there, you know? He's the main character in that everything we see, he's there. Even if he's not a part of it, he's there. And if he's not with Canute and Thorkel dealing with Harold and everything, I don't think we're gonna see it. But I don't know. I don't know. I am fascinated as to where this is going, though. What a very interesting turn. And, hey, you know, it seems like this is going to be, like, hey, the story is about Thorfinn now. Let's see what that's like, you know? So I'm really excited. I still absolutely friggin' love this show. And, yeah, I can't wait to see the next episode. But that is basically it. With all of that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist with all of my Vinland Saga reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.